Good morning, Good LNCC. morning, LNCC. How are we today? How are we today? Thank you, thank for, you for, um, um, joining us uh, for joining us this, this morning. This morning. This morning. Um, before, um, we start, before we start, I do apologize. I do apologize. We, we do have a little bit of technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Um, um, I do want to. I do want to share something though before before, um, before we all before we all begin. Um, I'd, um, like, to I'd like to read in John, John three verses verses twenty seven to thirty four. It says here, it says here John, answer, John answered and said, and said a, man, a, a man can receive, can nothing, receive unless nothing unless it has been, it has been given him. to him from heaven. From heaven. You yourselves, you yourselves bear, me witness, bear me witness that I said, that I, said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. Who has the bride is, uh, who has the, bride is the bridegroom, but a friend of the bridegroom. Who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's bo voice therefore this joy of mine is fulfilled um just that word i just like to share that um you know as as followers of christ um we represent him and sometimes um when we do things um for not only just for the church but for other things as well like whether it's at work or um, with our uh, with our friends that uh, we tend to glorify ourselves I've always believed that in ministry and in life you know what we do things inside the church shouldn't be different from the outside as well you know ministry is everywhere whether you're just doing OBS at the back, back um, at the background or doing announcements um, but it's also at work as well you're a salesperson if you're a tradie and basically what that verse is trying to say is as as representatives of Christ um, we are not the ones who ourselves bring the light but God in us and I believe that we should not only know how to represent Christ properly but we but know that we are representing him and not ourselves and in saying that, sometimes we try to glorify ourselves with our accomplishments. And, you know, in that merit, we do have our skills and works that we do ourselves. But at the end of the day, you know, if Christ is within us, He gives us the strength. He gives us the hope. And He, has, he gives us the grace. So as dark lit as this room is, <laughs> I, I hope that some of you still hold on to that light and i know some of you are tired i know some of you are weary but when you do things always know that you do things for god and no one else um do we do things um for for god and not not your friends not your family and as representatives of christ i hope that you you carry that that light and know that you are in his grace and in his love and in his hope so um, that's, just the, that's just the word that he's given me for this morning. So I hope that you guys are all blessed. Thank you for coming um, this morning. And, and God bless. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. beside you and tell them the biggest highlight of your week. It might be something really small or maybe something really massive happened, but turn to the person beside, beside you. And to those online, we would like to tell our most coolest highlight from the week. For this week? Yeah. Okay. For me, I actually went to visit my family in Tasmania, so that was really exciting. I surprised them <laughs> and they didn't know I was coming and they were really shocked, so that was very exciting for me. I was really close, spontaneous trip for Kristen. Um, my week was really, really relaxing. I had a week off TAFE and I went to um, Perth Royal Show and it was really fun. Wow. I went on like eight <laughs> rides. <laughs> Whoa, come on now. Yeah. And by the time I got home, it was uh, very dizzy, like just a very dizzy <laughs> night. Wow. <laughs> 
There you go. We would like to uh, extend a special welcome to Sergio De Silva. I don't know where you are, but it's your first Hello. time visiting today, and it's so nice to meet you. So be sure to find him after the service as well um, to say welcome. Yeah. Uh, and we just want to say happy birthday to all of the October yes. celebrants. Happy birthday. Whoever's Woo-hoo. celebrating. And happy anniversary to the lovebirds who are celebrating yes. uh, their anniversaries <laughs> this year. And um, we just want to say thank you as well uh, to those who have been faithfully giving to Titan Offering. And we just want to encourage everybody to keep doing that. And may his... May God's hands be upon you as you uh, continue to give. And uh, moving on to announcements. Yes. Now, there's quite a few announcements to tell you. So get out your phones or your diaries. And there'll be things coming up on the screen as well yep. that will have all the info. But the first announcement for your Bible study groups, there is a new study focus beginning on the Holy Spirit. And so there is a book that goes along with that that your Bible study leaders have. So if you would like to purchase one, they're $5 and you can ask your Bible study leader for that. And then the next exciting thing is to do with Christmas. Wow. Can you believe we're already talking about Christmas? Um, We're doing Christmas hampers. And so all the donation items, um, different things you can give, there's certain things that we need and don't need but that will be all on our Facebook and if you have any questions you can ask Pastor Dorothy and she'll be able to tell you what goes in there what doesn't go in there to make sure that that's all good as well and then there is impact training today after the service so be sure to stick around have a bite to eat and keep an eye out for when that begins too cool youth plus this one is for you because we will have our first ever camp here at this church next week woohoo October 8th to October 9th. It's just for one night. And uh, make sure that you talk to Lorraine and to Kuya Justin for more information. And we will have our department leadership meeting on Sunday, October 10th from 1 p.m. And also Missions Harvest update on the 17th of October on a Sunday. Now, men, listen up. There is a gathering. You're going bowling. How exciting. I think people need to pull out all the moves for the bowling. But that's on Sunday the 17th as well from 2 till 4 p.m. And you can contact Michael Perez if you'd like to go. But that's for all the men. And then for the women, there is also another gathering on the same day at 1 p.m. And I assume that's here and more details will come about that. Okay, bear with me. There's only a few more. Next announcement, there is going to be like a cleaning busy bee. We're going to clean this place together because yeah. that what a great way to build community and keep honor to our uh, exactly. Lord by keeping care of our space but that's on Saturday the 30th of October and Sunday the 31st so on Saturday it starts at 9 and then on Sunday it's just after the service but it's such a cool opportunity to be able to show our gratefulness for the space that we have yeah. by keeping it clean Absolutely. yeah and then the last one, we have a guest speaker this month, also on Sunday the 31st. Pastor Lynette Tobin is going to be coming to speak. And that is all the announcements for today. Wow, that was a mouthful. That was a lot. <laughs> so thank you yeah. guys for listening. If you're watching us online, stay tuned, sit back, and join us in worship. Music team, take it away. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. Are you ready to praise God? Come on, I'm going to hear you. Are you ready to praise God? Do you believe God, that God is here in our midst today? Yes, Lord, you are awesome in this place. Come on, your hands for God.
beautiful song to praise the Lord. As we enter our communion service, it's a holy time and it's a precious time. And to me, as we approach this time, that Jesus, on the last day, he gathered his disciples together in the upper room and they had this communion or the last supper. And, uh, you know, I don't think the disciples fully knew the extent of what was happening. But Jesus did. He knew that what was going to happen to him, that he was going to be crucified. And he knew the plan. You may be seated. He knew the plan. And in the Last Supper, as the disciples were gathered together, I think after Jesus died and rose again, I'm sure the disciples would have had very precious memories of this special feast that Jesus did. And he commanded his followers to do this often in remembrance and honor of him. All right, I've been along, me and my, both me and my wife have served the Lord probably for 60 years now coming. And we have conducted many, many services and taken many communion times. And each one is always special. And so we're now going to bless the elements. Now, my wife is, my daughter, Pastor, Pastor Dorothy is going to bless the bread and we partake of it. Then afterwards, hold the wine, hold the cup. Now you must understand that this is a holy symbol. It's a picture. It's a picture of what Jesus did at that time, the bread and the wine. Thank you. 
as I looked at what the meaning of the bread really is, it, my mind went back to a number of different uh, verses in the Bible. But you know what? The other thing that came to my mind was when we lived in Papua New Guinea, in the village areas, right out in the back blocks, they didn't have bread. So what did they use? Cow, cow. Cow, cow. Cow, sweet cow. Potato. Sweet potato. They had to Staple use that. Bread. And I started thinking about the bread. I wonder if there's any other countries too that have to use something else because they don't actually have bread. This is right out in the back village areas. And so I started to think a little bit more about the bread and how it was that uh, Jesus actually said to them, truly, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. You remember when the Israelites were in the wilderness, they received manna from God. It came down from heaven, the bread that came down from heaven. But Jesus says now, the true bread from heaven. The Father gives the true bread from heaven. And another verse, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He is saying that ultimately he can satisfy our deepest needs and longings. He can make us feel full and overflowing with blessing. Jesus is the bread of life. He satisfies. I know that in your culture, rice satisfies. You need rice to satisfy you. I'm just using symbols here. In uh, the Dutch, uh, in Holland, where he comes from, they needed bread. In my culture, my dad always wanted bread too. So here, there's different symbols that we have concerning the bread. But I want us today to think about the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. He was, his body was broken for us. That's what it really means to say, break open the bread. It is a symbol of the broken body of Jesus. And as we take the bread today, I want us to think about how much he's done for us. I mean, really, how much has he done for us? We've got to sit quietly sometimes to think about that how special Jesus has been to each one of us. And at any moment, at any time, we can call out, Jesus, I need you, I need help, because of the sacrifice of his body upon that cross, the symbol of a broken body. And that is what we're taking as we take the bread today. And we remember that broken body that was broken for each one of us that we might have forgiveness of sins, that we might have salvation. Let's stand as we take the bread this morning, shall we? Just in honour of Jesus, who has done so much for each one of us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, thanks don't seem enough for what you have done for each one of us. And as we take this symbol of bread today, Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us on the cross, for that broken body, that body that was ripped to shreds, that body that was torn for each one of us. Lord, we really can't even start to imagine how much you bore for each one of us, not just the broken body, but our sins that weighed you down. And today we thank you for all that you have done, for your, the gift that you've given to each one of us, forgiveness of sins. And so we take now this bread in honour of you, Lord, but knowing that you also have done so much for each one of us. Let's just take together. As we prepare to take the cup, I'd like to share this song. I won't sing it, but I'll re I'll, I will read it out. There's a song that us old timers used to sing often when we were much younger and with the different time. What? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah.
What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then, for my cleansing, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, if this is my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. I've done nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not by this I overcome. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now this, I'll touch my home. But nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, we lift this cup to you today. And we thank you, Lord. You face the cross. Lord, and Jesus, they put you on the whipping post before that. They plucked out your beard and put a crown of thorns on your head in humiliation. And Lord, you've done nothing wrong. But Lord, you went to the cross to die for us. And your precious blood was shed. That blood that still speaks and is very real in heavenly places. This precious blood has cleansed us individually as we accepted you as our Lord and Savior. Jesus, how we love you for the beautiful things you have done to save us. And Lord, we pray. Lord, I also added this prayer, Father, for Brother Les, Father, who is sick today. I pray for a miracle to set him free. Lord, I pray for a miracle to set him free. By your stripes, the Bible says we are healed. We claim healing for our brother. And we also claim healing, Father, for anybody that has an issue in health. Lord Jesus, Lord, nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful covering over us. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for blessing this cup in our hands today. Shall we drink together to honor the Lord? While the cups are being collected, we will go straight on into the message for the day. And me and my wife will be sharing a message on the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus, before Jesus left the disciples, he made a statement in John, in the Gospel of John. He says, I will send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Whether this brought comfort to the disciples, because when they realized that, he was, that Jesus was going away, they became very sad and troubled. But when Jesus said, I will send you another comforter, 
I think hope rose up within them. And then after Jesus was crucified, and on the third day he rose again, glory to God. And 40 days later, I believe, he went to heaven. And then 50 days after Jesus was crucified, Jesus was already in heaven. And the promise of the Comforter was sent down on the day of Pentecost as the disciples were gathered in the upper room. Another upper room appeared. 120 of them, the Bible says, I believe, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, who obviously was a follower of his, her son. And when this Holy Spirit was outpoured, it was like a rushing wind very strong and powerful. Tongues of fire came upon all those present. And it was a shaking experience when this happened. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And this outpouring has continued ever since up to now and in the future while the church is here on planet Earth. And so we just like to talk about this. At the, um, I'll be sharing something on something I shared a while ago, the alphabet of the Holy Spirit. But my wife is going to share first. On some, you want to speak first, love? I'm going first. Yes. Okay. That's right, a good gentleman, always right. ladies first. Okay. Amen? Amen. Then chibble. there'll be time for me, otherwise you know what happens. Oh, love. <laughs> I did not prepare a lot because he asked me to prepare a couple of testimonies on being led by the Holy Spirit. So first of all, I looked at uh, Romans 8.14, which says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And, and I want to just talk about the difference between being led by the Spirit. Quite often I have heard people come to say, God told me so. God told me to do this. I know this is what God wants me to do. But have you really thought about being led by the Holy Spirit? In our married life and even before, we started to look at the leadings of God in our life. And we looked not just at our feelings or our desires because if you look at just your feelings and your desires you could be led astray I'm sorry you can the Holy Spirit does move in these areas but there's a number of things that we need to consider when we're making uh, decisions to move in the Holy Spirit I have a couple of um, examples I'm going to bring up from our own life but first of all a we might have a strong desire to uh, go for a particular career or a life partner, or a church to attend, or our lifestyle. You know, a desire is not enough. You know, that's good. God does work on those desires and he does lead us when we have a desire to do th certain things. But we need more than that. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. In our life, we have always said, let's not just take how we feel. We know this is good. We know it's good for us to do this. But is it what God is wanting us to do at this moment? We look at our circumstances. Circumstantially, does it fit in with what, we are going, what we, God is leading us to, this particular uh, thing that we're looking at at the moment? All right, one, I can do one when we're leaving for Papua New Guinea. Neither of us wanted to go. We were never going to go. But God changed our minds. So then we looked at circumstances. How does it fit in with our family life at the moment? We have three young children. The eldest turned 10 on the way across to Papua New Guinea. Michelle was seven. Adrian wasn't born. So we, and we looked at our circumstances and we said, okay, if God wants us to go, well, then we're leaving after the school year and we're going to leave after Christmas. That was one thing that we decided because that circumstantially that fitted in good for our children with their schooling. We also looked at... Um, how we really, how God was leading us. And this to start with, we said we didn't want to go, but he changed our mind very definitely, both of us right at the same time. Amen, amen. Change, it was a very definite change of mind. So that is God leading. 
because he changed us. But then we looked at, uh, can we do the job they're wanting us to do over there? Is this something that we can actually do? So we needed to find out what sort of people they needed there. And the more we heard, the more we knew, yeah, we fit the bill. So we knew that we were being led by the Spirit to make this dramatic change in our life. I, we saw people go who were not led by the Spirit. Yeah. They went because they just felt a desire to go. And you know what? It was disaster. Absolute disaster. Their families got sick. If some of them almost died. They, they, it was not fruitful what they were doing. Now, this can happen in any decision that we make in our lives. Um, we need to have God's leading. The Israelites were led into the desert, but they grumbled. They complained mm -hmm. about their circumstances. When they saw the, after they, uh, the spies had gone out to look at the land, the promised land, and came back with this beautiful fruit, and, and, and it was just amazing what was there, but they said, there's giants in the land. Straight away, the people said, no, we're not going. We're frightened. We won't go. We won't go. But, you know, God had a plan to be with them and to take them through that uh, so that they could enter into that promised land and be used by him. But because they were fearful, because they were not led by God, it was a dramatic change they were going through. Because they were not led by God, they were 40 years, as you and I know, wandering around the desert, and they never entered that promised land. So what I'm saying... The decisions that we make cause different consequences in our life. They bring them. They can be disastrous. Like the some people who went to P&G and, and they shouldn't have gone. It was really hard for them. It was, it was really hard. Mm. The Israelites didn't pass the test at that time. But you know, Jesus was led into the desert. He passed the test. He was led for 40 days and 40 nights. And he went and he passed the test. And he was found to be without sin. So as a wrong decision can lead to much hardship. <clears throat> I thought about a few other things. I've done that one. Um, <laughs> all right, when we came back from P&G, I've got a couple of things about the way God has led us. When we first came back, we were three months just holidaying, really living around the churches and holidaying. But we said, what do you want us to do now, God? We have teenage children. We have children more than teenagers. They're ready to go to work. <clears throat> we had one in high school and one in primary and the two other two were ready for work. God, what do you want us to do? We've got to live. We were supported for the first three months. What are we going to do? And he wanted to go out and get a job. And you know what? <laughs> the pastor under said, don't get a job. I don't want you to get a job. That was comforting, wasn't it? <laughs> we thought, right, okay, we got four kids. They gave us a house to live in, which was amazing, and we were there for many years. So anyway, this, the head of our organisation had other plans, and he offered us a position in the church, which was God's leading. It wasn't what we had in mind at all. And then there was another um, milestone in our life, when we stepped down as senior pastors of, you know it now as Blue Gum, um, where David Cullen is, a lot of you know David. In um, it was then called um, Highway. We were the pastors of that church there and built that church. But there came a time when we knew that we needed to step down. We didn't feel our ministry or our work was finished, but we knew that our time there was finished. So we thought, what are we going to do now, God? We need to be led by you. And we were led by him, knowing it was time to step down. So we took 12 months, great 12 months. I think four of them were spent with our kids in America. And the rest of them, we were moving around from church to church. Church hopping. Yeah, we were church hopping. We don't. We didn't have a home church. And we were just want, we're feeling our way to see, God, what have you got for us? Has our time, we didn't feel our time in ministry had finished. But we were just trying to find out what God had for us. And so, and we were offered some positions at that time from different churches. But none of them rang very clear. And then some of you would know that we came to know uh, Pastor Roger Molina and some of you that are in this church, you were still with him at that time. 
And it was just a small church, mainly men. I was absolutely amazed and realized all the wives and families were still in the Philippines. And God led us to be a support to him at that time. And God did lead us because we had been looking around. And this is what God said, no, you stay here and you be a support to this man. And the rest of it is history. Most of you know how we've come to be here. So God still had a plan for our lives. We were led by the Holy Spirit in what we did. God often leads us in ways that we don't always see. You know, there's in our everyday life, little things can happen and we don't always give God the glory or, or in hindsight we look back and say, yes, I was led by the Holy Spirit. I was at the right place at the right time to do this or whatever it might be. And I was trying to think of a very current one and I think a very current one is uh, happened just probably two months ago. Um, I used to be on committee with a, a group called Aglow and I stepped down from committee because my commitments to the church became too much for me to handle the committee work. But once in a while, I still go there. And I hadn't been for a while. Pastor Con goes all the time, by the way. He's their advisor and he, he and his sister do and the, chief the worship <laughs> for them. But this particular day, I said, I think I need to go. I'm, I'm not so snowed under at the moment. I feel like I need to go. So we prepared and we went. And I walked in there and found that only one committee member was there. The others couldn't be that day. She is there. She's the president. She looked at me. She said, oh, I'm so glad you came today. I need help. Sure. What would you like me to do? Because I'm used to helping and doing whatever needed to be done. Now, I took that as God's leading, to be there to support her at that moment. She was struggling because her leaders weren't there. For de real legitimate reasons, it wasn't that they just didn't turn up. And so I was able to step in and do, can you do this, this? I said, sure, I can do that. I know what to do. So I did it, you know. Now, is that not God's leading? It is. And that's what I'm saying in the little things, which to her was a huge thing. But to me, it was like, okay, I'm in the right place at the right time to be a support to her. And this can happen in a lot of things in our life. You might have a, a real need in your life of a particular item, um, that you need to get. No, I'm not talking a want. I'm talking a real need of something. God will lead you at the right time, at the right place to receive it, often at a cheaper price. Why? Because you tithe, because you give to God and you want to be led by God. So this is how I looked at being led by the Spirit. I, look, we have lots and lots of testimonies of being led by the Holy Spirit, but these I wanted to look at some that have been before and some that were very current now how God leads us in all that we are doing. And he keeps us. He watches over us. And he's such a great God. He's such a great God. Even with talking to people, he leads us. If we just lean on him, we can be a blessing to other people. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Do you have some more to share later on? or? Um, only if you stir me up. <laughs> okay. I'll wait for you. All right. I'll just see how I go. Um, you know, me and my wife believe in teamwork. You know, our characters are diametrically opposed. Oh, yeah. You understand? And, but uh, by the grace of God, we have bridged into a union uh, of blending our strengths together. I have strengths. I have weaknesses. My wife... Also, but we complement each other. That's the main point. But the main thing is this, that um, with my marriage is that I prayed very hard as a young man. Lord, I know uh, there was a time in my life when uh, I didn't, wasn't interested in any sort of marriage at all. I was going to be a single man all the days of my life. But then I thought, nah. anyway, I prayed for a, a, a wife. And there she is, praise God. It's quite a story to that, but we won't go into that today. But the, I was led by the Holy Spirit, by the way. The Holy Spirit led me uh, to do this and to, you know, pursue my bride to be, you know, with all what I had. I chased her, right, and caught her in my net. Okay, all right. But, but, you know, God gives us good things. <laughs> You're probably getting a real strange picture of what sort of a man I am. Uh, 
if you're new here, you say, well, this man's crazy. Well, I agree with you. <laughs> so it's going to be okay. Praise the Lord. Um, it's an, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is, to me, um, number one in my life. Because the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And these three are one in the sense of working together in absolute unity, you know, in an ocean of love. That's how they work. God is love. Jesus is love. And the Spirit of God is love. Amen. Amen. And so when I, I, when for me to be born again, there was no pastor in Walpole. But the Holy Spirit was my pastor. I had this experience which in my heart I was born again. I didn't even know I was born again. But my life began to change immediately. I almost suffered culture shock. I used to go back to my old haunts in the hotel, the Manjum Up Hotel, you know, with my mates, you know, and I felt an alien. I had to get out. Before, I was a number one customer, but a change had been brought in my life. Praise God. Now, I'm going to just begin, um, if you remember that time, I hope you do remember something, that I, I talked in the Holy Spirit some time ago, and I used the alphabet, and this is part of the Bible study book I've got, Bible study book it's actually called, and it has quite a few unique ways of putting things and presenting them. And so this one is called the alphabet of the Holy Spirit, using the alphabet and to trigger different attributes of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you must remember, uh, I know people sometimes I think, oh, I wish, I wish I could touch Jesus. I wish he was here. Guess what? In the person of the Holy Spirit, he is there. Yep. Amen. Because he represents the Father and the Son. That's awesome. We have the Comforter who lives in our heart. One of the most astounding things that when I became a new Christian, because I was a turbulent man, you know, turbulent, furious sometimes, crazy, you know? But when Jesus came into my life, I experienced the shalom, the peace of God. Wow. Oh, what a wonderful feeling to have the peace of God in my life. No more guilt. But peace with God. And the Bible says that when you're in, oh, look at that. Oh, this is happening to me. The peace of God. So I can't quite remember. I never, I never finished that alphabet. I left it quite, uh, uh, you know, only half finished because of time, earth, earth time. We should go in heavenly time, you know. <laughs> anyway, that's why when you preach, you lose, uh, I lose uh, all time altogether because I'm connected to heavenly time where a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. How do you like that? Okay, I have my wife sitting here, and she'll keep me in check. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to begin right from the um, end of the alphabet and work my way back. But I may not reach my goal. Now, uh, first of all, I'm going to be speaking the Z, uh, W, V, V stands for victory in the Lord. U is unction to power. You know what unction is? Unction. Um, without unction, you cannot function. <laughs> if you like that poetry, you didn't know I was a poet, did you? Well, here I am displaying my awesome gift. <laughs> now, don't brag, Pastor Con. Humble yourself. Okay. Um, unction. Uh, unction is a motivation. That's another word for it, okay? 
And uh, so it's an, uh, a motivation to, 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 to empower, empower. Um, the Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One, 1 John 1 to 20, you know. And so um, this is something that the unction, that's King James English, because that's the only Bible I had when I got converted, okay, King James. Um, unction. So therefore, understanding also to discern and then use uh, the spirit of wisdom and understanding is an unction from God. Now, this is uh, Isaiah 11, which was a prophetic statement of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit, the, the sevenfold spirit of God. And there was two attributes. That he mentioned the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Underlined understanding, connecting with you, you know. Now, you and I have often prayed to the Lord, Lord, grant unto me the spirit of wisdom and understanding like you had. Because the Bible says as he is, so are we in this world. Can you and I attain into this level? Yes, you can. Because these are great gifts for the blessing of others. And God will not withhold these blessings from us if we desire and ask him. Ask him. It's amazing what comes. God gives you that wisdom and understanding. And the other gifts of two. Okay. Now, the other one, you, uh, you, we'll have to have a look at unity. Um, so let's just go have a look at unity. The Bible says quite a bit about that. And um, so I'd just like to, uh, um, for us to have a look here in my beautiful pages, unity. And um, there's also one of my favorite Psalms. I love the book of Psalms. It has ministered God's grace to me so many times. What the psalmist felt, I have felt. Because humanity has never changed. I had a, <coughs> the last time I was in the, getting my eye injected in the Lion's Eye Institute, and I sat between two ladies who were talking, you know, and I was in the center of it, you know. And, I, you know, that's good, you know. You know what ladies are like, they like to talk. Anyway, one of them was very thoughtful. She was uh, uh, quite a, a lady of, of me. She does a lot of social work. And then, so they began to include me in the conversation. Okay, and I responded. Anyway, I was looking for a little opportunity, you know, because I am a witness for the Lord, letter W, that I mentioned, you know, be a witness for Christ. And, uh, you know, I always look for that opportunity with these two beautiful ladies that probably be my age or even older, you know. And um, so, anyway, I've managed to put in that we need wisdom on the subject that they were talking about. Yeah, they agreed. And I said, and then I'm, I brought them back to the Bible, you know, the wisdom from Proverbs. And one of the ladies said, oh, is this up to, up, up, up to date, you know? Is this the modern way? And I gently said, wisdom is, ancient wisdom is the same up to today. I says, the wisdom from the ancients is right relevant to today. And, and uh, I mentioned uh, a, a section of wisdom, you know. Oh, yeah, that's true. So that was my witness to exonerate the word of God. So... Always looked for a time to witness to other people about Jesus or the Word of God. Just a little subtle opportunity. Sow the seed, you know? Anyway, that was my latest testimony for that one. Now, Psalm 133 says how wonderful and pleasant it is for um, brothers, and I include the sisters, to live in harmony and unity. You know, this is the strength 
of a church, of a gathering of people, of a family in unity as well. Now, you must understand the Godhead, the supreme governing in the universe, right? Not of the solar system. I, I, I love astronomy, not astrology. Astronomy, the knowledge of stars and things like I, I think it's fascinating because we're looking at God's creation. It didn't just the Big Bang. Maybe God used the Big Bang. When he spoke, let the be, maybe there was a Big Bang. I will not argue with that. But unfortunately, these theories change all the time. <laughs> you know. But anyway, whatever happened, it was good. And there's a magnificent uh, canopy of constellations and stars up there, you know, which is God's handiwork. Amazing. Particularly when I get the whirlpool, when you see there's no pollution of light, the, the air is very clear, and you, know, you can feel the pulsating of the universe, you know? Amen. Right. So anyway, um, live, living together in harmony. For harmony and unity is as precious as to the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and the border of his robe. Um, unity is as refreshing as the dew of Mount Hermon and th that falls on mountains of Zion. When Aaron was anointed high priest, they just didn't use a, a, you know, a little drop of oil. They poured it down on his head and it ran down his face into his garments, right down under his lower garments. Must have been quite a few liters of oil they used. They did a good job. And there's a whole sermon on that, but we won't go there. But unity is something that we can achieve by being humble enough to look at others' good points, making room for people to operate, recognizing their gifts, there comes wisdom and understanding. The gift of wisdom and understanding, and you begin to understand the people that are around you. You make room for them. You don't promote yourself, you promote them. You know, when we were sent to Papua New Guinea, we had a commission which one term called, called second wave missionaries. The first wave where the missionary instigated everything. He built this, he built that. Then preached to the people. And then after a while, it takes like a year, the Holy Spirit works on those people. They get saved and born again. And then God begins to raise up leaders. It's amazing how God does that. And... Our job was to work with the emerging leaders, to, make, to work alongside of them. Now, working al alongside, we, we were working our way out of the job, you know, which is great because the more you give away, the more God gives you. You know that law? The law of giving? The law of giving... The more you give, unending supply, even in money. I'm not talking about utter foolishness, but wisdom from God. You can't outgive God. And it's just like here, we, we work amongst you, not to boss you, we're not, we're not that kind, but to work alongside of you, to encourage. Often I've come alongside of you and prompted you and say, this is what, you know, you have this Gifting, go for it. Okay, and I'll continue to do that. Move. God will anoint. You have the gift. Make use of it. Amen. Praise God. Sorry, I get a bit excited, you know. It's all right. And, you know, the Bible says, as, and there the, the Lord has pronounced his blessing and Life everlasting. It's quite difficult sometimes to be working together in unity because you've got to have grace. You've got to have love. 
and you can't get offended. <laughs> you can't get offended. I mean, I've been offended many times. You know? So what do I do? Leave the ministry! Get angry at God! Kick the church! Condemn the leadership! Oh, no way. That's the way of death. No way. Forgive! Forgive! Let it roll over your head. I am the righteousness of Christ. Look what they did to Jesus. Look how strong he stood. Amen. The sufferings of our Lord. Look at the Pharisees how they used to mock him, work against him, try to trick him. But Jesus was always one step ahead of them. You know, I know they killed him. But never mind, there was a purpose in that, to save us. The final lamb was slain at Calvary, once and for all. And the blood avails for us today. Isn't God good for making that provision? There's something here in the prayer of Jesus. I was at a conference yesterday, and that was mentioned. The failure of the church you know, is schisms and splits and not working together in unity, you know. And, uh, and something that uh, I want, just want to read out. And this is the prayer, the last prayer of Jesus before the supper, you know, before the events that, of Calvary. And he, look, you want to read that prayer. It's a long prayer. He prayed that to his heavenly Father. It's awesome, beautiful. And from verse 21, I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and that they may be, that they may be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. Can you understand that? This was the prayer of Jesus to his Father. Can this be achieved? Yes, it can be. I know in my life, it's very interesting when I reflect on my ministry life, the people I had to work with, you know? Amazing. So what did I do? I asked the Lord, give me insight that I might be united with them. Amen. It's no good criticizing or thinking that I'm the only one that's right. That's wrong. Humble yourself. And see how you can flow together in the Lord. It's a command from the Lord. So, this is, uh, I've given them your glory. You gave me so that I may become one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience the perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. See, Jesus and the Father had this awesome love relationship. The love of God. Have you experienced the love of God? Now turn me around. All that I knew when I was first saved, I didn't know very much, but I knew he loved me. Hallelujah. And after all these years, he still does. I experience the love of God. It's a strength. Amen. God loves me. And no matter what you say about me, and no matter how you might roll me down, knock me down, God loves me. And that was, has sustained me through all my ministry years. I'm still going. 
Because God loves me. And he loves you the same. Unchanging. What a wonderful place that we have. Abide in, the, in Jesus, you know. Live in him. Rejoice in him. Because he loves me. Amen. Changing me too. To be lovable. Amen to other people. All right, so much for unity. We can go on and on. But I also want to st- uh, uh, <clears throat> talk about something else. And I'll go back now to the last letter. I'm just <laughs> ministering. Uh, my wife's keeping the eye on the time. And I'm submitted to my wife. And I love. Yeah. <laughs> Hope so. See, that's an expression of faith. All right. Okay. Now, be- before I begin this... Uh, um, we want to bless you with an item. So, can you come here, love? And we're going to sing this song that we talked about. It's just a very old chorus. And those of you that were in the prayer meeting earlier on, you would have heard this song being sung, this chorus actually being sung. But uh, Pastor Con thought, hey, this is really a good one. Let's get fired up with the Holy Spirit. Some of you will know it. If you don't, you'll pick it up really quickly. You like that? Can you put the thing? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you people in the back, listen very carefully to my beautiful guitar playing, please. <laughs> All right. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. It's keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive, yes, it's keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. There you go. We used to sing that when we were youngins. We've just got a bit older and we still sing it. <laughs> Uh, I think he's coming back. <laughs> well, <you're blessed. laughs> Amen. Amen. See, when I was a young Christian, we had lots of those rousing choruses. And today, it's changed a bit, but it's still the same, and the Holy Spirit's still the same. Amen. Now, okay, I've, we've covered three letters of the last thing, uh, V for Victory, uh, w, witness to establish. Holy, Holy Spirit himself, you know, he bears witness with our spirit. And uh, so, then also, now we come to the letter Z, or Z, as they say that in America. What do you Filipinos say? Z or Z? Z. Do you know, that's a Dutch word. You know what that, uh, that means, Z? The C. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right, Paul? The Z. Yeah, the Z. Ocean. Z. So how come this, it's Z? <laughs> That's how we say it in Australia. <laughs> and we live in this great land. You come here to be Australians. Amen. Amen. Okay, we've got to have a response. All right. All right, praise the Lord. It's good that we can have fun in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, if we lose our sense of humor, 
Oh, we've lost an awful thing. If you can have the ability to laugh at yourself and others, be joyful in the Lord, the Bible says. From the letter J, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Praise God. Now, z zeal. You ever heard of the word, not seal, that's an animal. We use the word seal, the envelope. Complicated English language, double meaning, triple meanings for the same word. The zeal is to inspire. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Acts 2 verse 17. Now, I'm just going to turn to a word study. No, this is just secular here, this one from the... Uh, my wife presses something on... I was going to go and get my big couple of dictionaries I have, you know, my library. She said, don't worry, we'll test Google, find it on Google. Everything's on Google today. On breakfast, press the button, Google. And then Uber will come up, Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah, it goes on, doesn't it? Then you've got to make a phone call. Or, or, or send one of those emails. I don't know how to send an email. Yeah, it's all right, Pastor Con. You're doing okay. Right. Now, it's a noun. You know what a noun is? I don't know what a noun is. But never mind. <laughs> it's okay. It's great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of an, uh, of an objective, of a cause, an objective. Um, it's also um, d different other meanings of that. It's called synonym, synonyms as passion, zealousness, and also the mention about love, Fervor, fire. Amen. And devotion. Oh, man. Kindness. Isn't that really great? You know, it, it has a very deep meaning word, zeal. And you know what? I won't sing this song, but I used to sing this. I could sing it, but... You know, it's a song like this. The zeal of God hath consumed me. It, it burns in my soul a mighty force that cannot be stopped. A fire that cannot be quenched. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know. The zeal of God hath consumed me. It's burning in my soul. A mighty force that cannot be stopped. A fire, a fire cannot be quenched. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the zeal of God hath come shown me, it's burning in my soul, a mighty force that cannot be stopped, a fire that cannot be quenched, oh halle hallelujah, 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 halle halle hallelujah. Amen. All right. In that song, I use Connie Pastor Con's timing system, <laughs> which means flexibility, stretch here, short and there. And it's a wonderful system. But I have a problem. Nobody accepts it and look down on me. But I think it's wonderful. Ah, oh dear, it's okay. It's just because I never had the schooling to learn music properly. I am a bush kanaka. You know, it's okay. But it's amazing 
the Lord has never convicted me of doing something wrong. So it's acceptable to him, but not acceptable to the laws of music. Ah, oh dear, it's okay. Now, you know, this is something, the zeal. Ah, when Jesus went to the temple and he saw the corruption there, the money changers, the profiteering, as the, the people sold the sacrifices, you know, to the people that wanted to offer sacrifice. He got very angry. And his zeal, the zeal of God consumed him. And he just went berserk, tipping the money, changed the tables over, storming through. Why have you made my father's house a den of thieves? My father's house is a house of prayer. I don't think I have the capacity to express the emotions that Jesus had or the fury that was burning in his life, in, his, you know, in the fury of God. You know, there's an aspect to, to, to God's fury and anger that you and I hopefully will never see or express. We talk about the Great Tribulation. That's where it will be expressed, where God's anger will be outpoured upon the sins and corruptions of this world. It's very heavy. Right, as Christians, how is your fire burning? When I was younger, you know, we used to have a terminology which was great when I was a young Christian. He's on fire for God! You ever use that now? No. Something we dropped out of vocabulary. Are you on fire for God? Hey, can someone come here and translate it into Tagalog? Are you on fire for God? Hey, de definitely. Is that fire burning? Pentecostal fire burning? Hey, this, why are you so quiet? Okay, this morning we were praising God. How great is our God? Were you sitting like this? Oh dear. How great is God? No! I was nearly leaping out my skin. How great is God? Put some. I, I know there's a passion here. I know there's a fire. But you're not connecting with that. You know? The zeal of God has consumed me. That's what we should sing when we were young in the Lord. You know? Coming to the edge of fanaticism doesn't matter. Wildfire is better than no fire. I'm an old bushfire fighter, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, controlling fires... And, and directing fires, we used to do that, you know, to burn the bush, you know, cross burning and all that. You fight fire with fire, right? And, uh, but there is such a thing as the fire of God within you, the fire of the Spirit. I see lots of Christians, you know, there used to be a time that we had Sunday night meetings. Now we don't ha have that. Oh, we're too busy now. You know? Well, it, it means the more you attend good church, good uh, uh, exposed to ministry, it, it's stirring up the heart of the people, you know, and putting fire of God into your life. I, I feel opposition here today, right? And I'm going to fight it through. The fire of the Spirit manifested in flames of fire on the day of Pentecost. 
I think that flame then went into their spirit. Now, you know, you and I, I had this opportunity to share this in the city of Bayswater last time I'd, I'd, I spoke on behalf of the churches. I went a bit out of my way, you know. And I said to them, we have tremendous plans for the exercising of the body, you know, exercising and all that. And that way, that way, pumping the muscles, you know. You see these guys, you know, you know. Muscle power. Okay, nothing wrong with that. All of us need exercise. We have tremendous knowledge about some things of the mind, you know, ability to treat some mental problems. They call the, the soul, you know, of man. Psychology. I don't believe much in psychiatry, but good psychology is good. But we don't have too much teaching in the secular world about the spirit of man. And that's the most important part of us. Job. He says there's a spirit in man. And the understanding of the Almighty gives him understanding. This came from an ancient, uh, they reckon Job could be one of the oldest books in the Bible. And Job was not... An Israeli, he lived at the bottom end of Arabia. But he knew God very well. He knew Adonai, the Almighty, you know. And he had wonderful revelations, a wonderful book to read. It's awesome. And um, for Job to say, there's a spirit in man. And the understanding of the Almighty gives him understanding. So this is where God works. In the spirit, in our spirit. And how is your spirit before God today? Is it fired up? Because that's what motivates you. You know, you can have ailments in your body and, you know, be languishing here. But if your spirit is strong, you keep on going. Because this is where the revelation comes. We hear the words through here and we allow it to sink into here. Now sometimes what happens is the word comes in here and we mull it around in our heads but we do not let it go down in our spirit. Now you see, as a Christian, I know that I'm a spiritual man. I'm a spirit, really. What's going to go be with the Lord? My spirit. Amen. And in my spirit, the word of God resides. Amen. I remember in my most tragic moment when I nearly died and I thought I was gone. I didn't pray from here. I prayed inside. God, have mercy. That's what I prayed. But it wasn't here. It was from here. My spirit wasn't even born again, I don't think. Look, we must guard our spirit. Feed it with the word of God. That's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important. Pray in the language God's given you. It's, I call the speaking in tongues or speaking in different languages my prayer language to God because my spirit prays to God. And I always feel so good and peaceful after I've done that. Amen. That's why we should hunger to receive that fullness. Ask. See, lots of Christians get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they allow it to die. They don't exercise it. I remember when I was, was baptized, a very unusual place. I was praying for three months to receive it. Lord, please. My pastor, it was time to lead, uh, to lead the songs in the church. In those days, we only had one instrument. 
would have been Pastor Dorothy playing the accordion, and my pastor prayed. And as we prayed in the prayer room, suddenly I felt this whoosh, or felt this coming out. Of my, it was the baptismal. And I began to speak in other languages, just a few words. Wow. I still remember that song service. I was beside myself. Woo! You know? But then I had to exercise that gift. So it became multitude, different languages. And to me, I still often pray. I daily pray in that language. Because it connects my spirit to where it should be, to God. When I pray, I pray mysteries. Sometimes the Lord's very graceful, the Spirit's very... And I also pray in English on what was said from here. My connection with God is sacred and holy. Amen. That's all that I've got. If I have that, I have everything. Amen. I'm a rich man in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, why do people drop out? Why do they die? Why do they run low? Because they don't charge their batteries up. And they get operating in their own strength. All right, I'm 81 years old, served God for a long time. I know the secret. Spend time with God. I love prayer meetings. You know, I also noticed as a pastor over the years, the, the prayer meeting was always poorly attended. The devil was always very successful in finding many excuses for people to be late or not to come. Yeah. So you give in to the devil. Well, I hate the devil. He hates me. I, 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 yeah. And so if you give away and don't stand up, then you begin to fade away. I've seen many men of God with promising ministries and then they allow other things to take place and they gradually fade out into nothing and the devil's laughing. There's one thing, I've only one life, and I'm quoting from an old missionary's quotation, I've only one life. It'll soon be past. But what I've done for Christ will last for eternity. Do you know that every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ? If you miss it, you'll stand in the white throne judgment. I've got to give account for my ministry, for the things in life I've lived and th things I've done. How can I keep the standard up? By trusting in Jesus, who gives me the strength, who represents me daily before the Holy Father. Jesus is my high priest. He prays for me every day and for you as well. What are you doing with it? I love communion, honoring Jesus' death. Honoring my Lord for the great sacrifice. One day I'll see him. What a glorious day that will be. Folks, we cannot just be comfortable. Maybe you're getting upset with me. I don't care. But you've got to be on fire for God. It's his will. But the key is in your heart. Remember in Revelation chapter 3. Jesus stood outside, you know, in the ch church of Laodicea, the church that had plenty of money, but the people were lukewarm. And Jesus was standing outside. I stand at the door and knock. Will you let me in? Right, folks. I don't want to be part of a Laodicean church because Christ is in us. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. Look, folks, music team's coming. And my, how come the time shifts so quick? I must have a miracle watch. It goes, join. 
All right, folks. Look, I'm not speaking here to condemn. I'm speaking here to challenge. Young people, where will you be in 10 years' time? Do you think ahead? Yeah. Will you be serving God? Will you be living in a blessed state of God's protection over, over your life? Or will you have died allowing the pleasures of this world, the materialism of this world? Listen, I'll tell you what. What lies ahead of us? Okay, this is the second year of COVID. What's going to happen? Never, things will never be the same again. What else is going to happen? Economic collapse. All these are great possibilities. So, are you going to collapse as well? Not if you believe in Christ. Not if you believe that he's your rock. Be on fire! You know, there's an angel that come. Angels of fire that put fire and come over a congregation. Folks, we need it to survive. Amen? If we are mediocre, half and half, one foot in the world and one foot in God, that's not the way. We'll miss it. But in Christ, who loves us so much, partaker of the love of God, the blessing of God, is our portion. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you, Father, for our people. Thank you, Lord, that we are a congregation. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the vision. We pray for our pastor, Lord God's heaven, a good rest and holiday. Restore her, Father, so she can come back fully on fire. Oh, God. And we pray, Lord, by this congregation, lift up its game, Lord God, and be on fire for God in a greater way than ever before. Lord, we call this from glory to glory. It's always upward, not downwards, and we can't level out. But, Lord, by your grace, Lord, let you do. Lord, you've commissioned us to love you fervently. The love of God constrains us, constrains us. Where we go to greater depths of relationship and intimacy with you, Lord God. For to know you more and more, Lord God, is the very gift of life, life eternal, that motivates us to do great things for you, Lord God. Great things for the Lord our God in these last days. Calamity and disaster strikes, Lord. We shall be strong. We shall have the strength. We will not fall down, but we will rise up against everything that may be negative. So, Jesus, we thank you for your love and mercy. And Lord, I pray, Lord, against anybody who's struggling with issues and clouded in, Lord, give them the light. Bless them, Lord, we pray. Open the altars if you want to just come and pray to the Lord. You know, it's always something about doing something that I'm challenged. Lord, I want more.
Jesus. May your beautiful face shine on us, Lord God. May your beautiful nail scarred hand keep it on our lives. Guide us, lead us by the Spirit of God into love and righteousness. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon us. And may we feel His presence every day. Create in us, Lord, a hunger to press in to the Holy of Holies. You have opened the gateway, Lord Jesus. And remember, Lord, when you died on the cross, an angel cut the curtain in the tabernacle and exposed the Holy of Holies in the Temple of Jerusalem. It was a miracle, Lord, but it meant that we have the authority to enter in to the Holy of Holies, the presence of the Lord. Let that be everyone's portion, Lord God. Bless our fellowship, bless our church, that we will be in the will of God. We thank you for our vision, Lord, for the Karatha Church. We thank you, Lord, for Chaung, Lord God in the Philippines, as a sister church being raised up. Bless the pastors, bless the congregation, Lord God. Provide every need for them. Lord, pray for those absent today. Bless them too, we pray. Amen. Let's give God the praise, the best praise. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Phil.
It's been a long time coming, I ain't seen nothing. Help me please. Out of breath, I'm running, the bridge is burning after me.